Hey guys, Dave Albano back here with you again. If you haven't been paying attention to the previous videos in this series, this is all about the customer value journey. Go back and see the various stages that I walked you through, the different levels that don't appear here. Go back and refresh your memories or for the first time, see them for the first time in the previous uh, videos. They're all labeled correctly around the CVJ overview and then CVJ level one, level two, level three. That is a proprietary system that digital marketer created, the customer value journey, affectionately known as the CVJ. I'm Dave Albano of Joseph Marketing and a uh, certified partner and elite marketing coach with Digital Marketer. As a certified partner, I am licensed to use the customer value journey in my own and others' businesses. We serve uh, million dollar companies to double their revenues in 12 months or less. This is one of the ways we do that, using the customer value journey. So I implore you to use it in your own business as well. In this video, I'm gonna teach you a simple scoring system that I developed for my own clients that I would love to share with you. This is actually brand new to Digital Marketer and it's super simple. It's a great way to analyze on the spot your business or if you're a marketing agency or a consultant working for another business or maybe the head of a marketing department in a corporate big enterprise you can use the same system to score your own business keep in mind this is avatar centric you must know your avatar before you develop your entire customer value journey that's super important okay and once you do and once you have all the things mapped out or you take an existing business and see how they score against these stages, this is how you do it. It's super simple. Once you know all the stages and you are familiar with them, go back and watch the audio other video series to do so, then you can score them. The way we do that is out of a simple scale of one to 10. Write a number, and if you're watching at home right now or watching at work, do this for your own business if you're an entrepreneur or a business owner. If you're a startup and you're considering opening a business or you have a business idea, do this for the idea if it doesn't exist yet. It's super important, okay? And when you know the aware stage and what goes in it, again, watch the other videos to find that out, score how robust and developed is your aware stage. Do you have organic and paid traffic systems going into drive awareness? Do you have referral programs in place at the promote stage to drive awareness? All those things. On a scale of one to 10, and do this right now for your own business or one that you're thinking of creating, on a scale of one to 10, how robust is your aware stage? Go ahead, write it in now. Okay, I'm gonna do this for a fictional company. And let's say I'm working with a business. This is one of the first things I do with them to see where they currently are. This sets the baseline so we can measure every quarter and rescore how we're doing. So on a scale of one to 10, I would come in and say, look at a, a company and maybe they're largely relying on word of mouth and referrals. They don't have any really robust SEO in place and they're not doing any paid advertising. In a case like that, I'd probably rate them quite low, something like a two or three at the engage stage. Remember at this stage, this is all about the conversation people are having with you once they become aware of you. This is your content marketing bucket. This is also your social media bucket. How robust is your company's or the company you're analyzing, uh, how robust is their content marketing or social media presence? Do they have a blog in place? Are they podcasting? Are they producing YouTube videos? Uh, do they have uh, all the social media channels? Uh, Facebook, Pinterest, LinkedIn, whatever your social platforms are, how robust are they? How active are they? How much are people engaging with you? And when we think of engaging on social, these are the likes, the shares, the comments, that's a conversation. Those are all engagement metrics you can track. How robust is that? In this fictional, fictional company, they're doing okay. They have some, they have, let's say they have a, uh, a Facebook page, but you know, they're not uh, publishing much or posting much on it. And they have a simple blog, but they're posting just once a month. So it's not uh, heavy in content. So I would rate something like that, maybe a, a three to four. Okay. Continuing with the scoring system, 
Once they become aware with you, we score them on that. Once we score them on the engage stage, then at the subscribe stage, that's all about generating leads into your ecosystem. This is how many lead magnets do they have in place? Are those lead magnets actually performing? Okay, so you gotta think of not just what you have in place at each stage, but the performance of the things that are in that stage. In this fictitious company, to be honest, a lot of companies don't even have lead magnets. The only thing they have to generate leads that they're not driving traffic to is a contact form on their, their contact us page. That's typically the limit and that is a trickle to none in my experience for most businesses. So if you have zero lead magnets in place, guess what? You're gonna score yourself a zero here. You might be doing webinars, for example. A webinar registration page counts as collecting a lead. So if you have that in place and you uh, are collecting leads through webinar registrations, okay, you can score yourself a little higher. But if you have nothing like that in place, you're a big goose egg here, guys. I'm sorry to say, but let's mark that as zero. The next stage we're gonna talk about in scoring is the convert stage. And by the way, this is all about CVJ scoring. This is my own CVJ scoring system I developed on the back end of Digital Marketer's proprietary customer value journey. Simple, just score each stage out of 10. We're at the convert stage in this fictitious example. And in this fictitious company, uh, at the convert stage, remember that's all about a low ticket offer or an investment of time. Low ticket offer, especially in the info uh, product world, is something like a, a $7 uh, entry point offer. That's something that they pay. And think of the convert stage like um, an impulse buy at the checkout of a grocery store. You buy a pack of gum. It should be a no brainer. That's a low ticket item. Another conversion mechanism is an investment of time, like they register to a uh, webinar or a masterclass and they actually show up. They're investing their time. If you don't have any of that in place, you're gonna mark yourself low here. In my experience, most businesses have none of that. They don't have any entry point offers, uh, low ticket items, or a mechanism of an investment in time. However, if you are a consulting business, for example, and offering free strategy sessions, that's a form of investment time, that counts. So if you have something like that in place, you're gonna score yourself a little higher, but if that's the only thing you have in place, it's still pretty low. Let's score this fictitious company that doesn't have a low ticket offer, they don't have any webinars, but they do take sales calls, strategy sessions. Let's count that and let's give them a three for that. Okay. We're back to stage five, the excite phase, one of the most misunderstood phases in the entire customer value journey. How do we score this? Remember guys, we can reverse engineer excitement. How do we do that? We deliver excitement typically at the previous convert stage. Are they excited enough? Do you deliver an aha moment that they are excited enough to continue on through the journey? When someone signs up as a customer with you, maybe you can send them a shock and awe package that they weren't expecting. Maybe the founder of the company you are, is notified whenever you get a customer and they actually email them or call them. That is unheard of. That would excite a new customer and say, wow, this company really cares about me. So you can reverse engineer excitement. How are you doing that at the convert phase or shortly after they become a customer so they are excited enough, you deliver an aha moment or extreme customer service so that they are excited. In my experience, most companies never even think of this. They don't have anything in place in the fictitious example I'm walking you through. Either does this company, they have a zero. Finally time in this fictitious example to get to the goods, selling the core offer. That resides at the ascendant stage, stage six. Remember, most companies start here. They don't do all this pre-planner or mapping out this blueprint of how they ascend people through their value journey. They typically send them directly to the core offer. Most companies have a core, ship, a core offer. That's your flagship offering that you are known for. At the ascend phase, also bundled in there is all your upsells or downsells or what you can cross promote to sell them, okay? Uh, Amazon does this really well, for example, when you buy a book, for example, hey, who people who bought this thing also bought this thing. Those are uh, easy examples of upsells, especially in the e-com world. Do you have something like that in place? If you're starting a business, well, then you have nothing in place. You haven't made sale one, but if you're an established business, then uh, presumably you have a core offer. You're offering value to the world in the form of a core offer and other upsells and downsells. 
Let's assume that's true for this business. Most businesses have something to sell. So let's score them a four for that because they mainly have their core offer. They might have you know, something pretty mediocre as an upsell or downsell, but if none of that in place, you're gonna score lower. If you have at least a core offer in place and presumably it's pretty good, remember you wanna factor in the performance, not only the existence of the mechanisms at each stage, but their performance. Two factors when you're scoring. And it's, it's one of these, this is a ballpark scoring guy. So it's kind of objective, kind of subjective. It's a bit of a hybrid approach in the scoring system they have a core offer in place that is pretty good, adds value to the world, let's score them a four because they don't have a robust upsell, downsell funnel mechanism. Okay, we're almost done with this scoring example, guys. So we scored the first two levels. Remember level one, the bottom row is all about leads. Level two is all about customers. You can learn more about those levels in the previous videos in this series. Let's go to level three, fans. This I find is where a lot of businesses fall down. They don't have anything at the advocate or promote stage. At the advocate stage, this is where your testimonials and case studies reside. Some businesses, they have some good uh, testimonials and case, case studies. Let's say they have a smattering in this fictitious example. This company has a smattering of uh, cool testimonials that they use in largely on their, their website or promotional materials. So we're gonna score them a three. They only have testimonials in place because they uh, people offered them or they uh, asked for them, but they don't have any system in place to automatically generate testimonials. That would be a robust, a more robust example of how you would score higher in that. If they had lots of case studies and they're generating leads off those case studies, for example, or generating awareness, it's all about the advocacy at that stage that people, your clients are willing to give you a case study how many case studies you have, how many testimonials you have. Also wanna mention a key difference between advocate and promote stage that a lot of people miss. Advocate is typically passive. What do I mean by passive? These people here, they're fans of your company, but they will only give you testimonials or case studies if you ask them. They are not going to actively shout you out. Well, they might shout you on the social media, but they're not going to actively offer a testimonial uh, unannounced. Okay. That's because that's what I mean by passive. You have to ask them. Let's compare that against promote. At the promote stage, remember in a previous video, the level three video, I mentioned at the promote stage, this is where your referral systems are in place, your loyalty pro programs reside. This is where you might have some joint venture partners that are promoting you because they're incentivized to do so, all those things. And they promote you, so if you don't have anything in place, you're gonna score pretty low here, guys. In this fictitious company, they got the odd referral and word of mouth, but that's not, uh, they're not generating that um, in with intent that they just happen to come in and they never know when that's called hope marketing we want to eliminate that and in this case when we're analyzing this fictitious company they don't they're relying on word of mouth and referrals but they don't know when they're coming in so we're gonna score them at a zero because they have nothing in place to actively get uh, JV partners referrals and so forth so they're a zero okay guys that's our fictitious example to be honest, this is pretty close to reality for most businesses when I do this with them. I'm curious to hear what your business might have scored when you follow this through with me. So hopefully you've been following the bouncing ball, writing down your own score for your own business or a business that you work with and scoring them through the various gauges. Remember, this is out of a 10 point scale. So let's add all these scores up and see what we have. What did this fictitious example, this fictitious company get? super typical of most businesses that I work with. And if you add all these up, we get a whopping 17. Three, four, three, four, three, and a whole bunch of goose eggs. 17 guys. Now remember the scoring system is out of 10 for each stage. There's eight stages, which means this score is out of 80. Seventeen out of eighty, and if you convert that into a percentage, you get a measly twenty-one percent, guys. Twenty-one percent out of eighty. Okay, seventeen out of eighty. 
Super typical of pretty much every single business I work with. We do this with them. I encourage your, you to do it for your own business or any business you're working with. You can do this once a quarter. And when you first start working with a business or when you first do this for yourself, get the baseline. This is your baseline percentage. 21%, yeah, failing grade. That is most people. I have never ever done this with any business that gets 50% or more. 20, 30, maybe max 40. 40 is actually really high uh, is the typical score I get when I do this exercise because no one has, they don't check all the boxes. No one has all this in place. I encourage you to get this in place for you, score yourself, and then review this. Do the same exercise every quarter to see how you improve. And how do you improve? You're filling in the holes in the boxes that you may have. Maybe you don't have any lead magnets at the subscribe stage. So next quarter, you maybe you introduce two or three into your business and you can change a zero into a three. Uh, maybe at the excite phase, you haven't thought about how you can reverse engineer excitement. This helps um, prescribe what projects you can implement into your business to raise this score up. And when you start to check all the boxes, then you raise that score up collectively quarter over quarter, you grow and scale your business. And that is the CVJ scoring system that I invented guys that builds on top of the customer value journey. Hopefully that helps. Hopefully that makes sense. That's how you can instantly analyze any business on the spot and show continual progression. If you're tracking this quarter over quarter to try and increase that score down there. Hopefully your score was a little higher. If not, you can reach me at josemarketing.com or check us out at Digital Marketer because I'm also one of their certified partners allowed to teach and implement this stuff and one of their elite marketing coaches. I'm Dave Albano. Hope you're having an awesome day. Hopefully this helped onward and upward.